Welcome back to another edition of the Blue White Illustrated Penn State football recruiting and uh, podcast. I'm Greg Pickle. He's Ryan Snyder. And Ryan, we have so much to get to this week. Big recruiting announcement coming in a couple of days. Penn State just went through a huge commitment run, and you're checking in with us from Denver, and we're appreci- We're so glad you're here with us while you're on vacation taking a few minutes. We have a lot of recruiting stuff to discuss. Yeah, yeah man, uh, this, uh, was this was supposed to be vacation, vacation week. week. Uh, uh, I, knew I knew that, that was uh, going to kind of get thrown out the window a bit when uh, uh, Denai Dennis, Dennis Sutton announced July 22nd, 22nd. but, uh, but uh, that's, that's part, part of the, part the job. job. You know, we, we knew coming out here this time of the year is going to be busy. Uh, little, little sister, sister couldn't, couldn't wait, wait one more week, week uh, it's for her wedding, so, so it is what it is. Although she would have waited another week, week the, the you know the, the uh, quiet period starts up at the end of July. So, so it is what it is. Uh, we're, we're we're still working out here a little bit, bit trying to get, get a little R and R in, while also making sure we're on top of our stuff. So let's get it rolling. All right, so yeah, we'll talk about deny Dennis Sutton. He will decide the five star defensive lineman a little bit later this week. But first, let's start with. A little bit of a commitment run for Penn State. It started with Spencer Rowland, Harvard transfer, offensive lineman, who still has one more season to play for the Crimson, but then will come to Penn State next May. Obviously, Eric Wilson joined the program from Harvard this past year. Ryan, this is definitely a new one, uh, but I think a player that Penn State certainly is excited to one day count among its ranks. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, 6'6", 290, 290, versatile, versatile from, from, from what, what I've been able to learn. Penn State, Penn State feels like they could plug him in a few spots. Uh, he's originally from Minnesota, just like Eric Wilson, too. And the more I learned here, the more it feels like Eric had a decent impact on this. Uh, one thing I actually went was Eric actually, I believe, was his official visit host or hosted him in some capacity when he visited Harvard. So those guys kind of came close right away. You know, he told us that uh, when they would both go home to Minnesota, they would hang out. And then having Eric, Eric here already, already. Uh, I, think I think that's, that's a big, big part of why he's deciding now instead of waiting. Uh, uh, I was asking around a little bit about other schools, schools and right, right now he said there weren't too many other power fives, fives pushing hard, get the, get the impression maybe some group of fives were, were. Uh, but, but, but really yeah, a lot of schools just wanted to see his tape. The Ivy League didn't get to play last year, so a lot of schools wanted to check that out and Penn State was able to get him on campus for an unofficial visit in June. And then when when you're able able to do that that this year, year, you're able to work work the guy. So So the workout workout went well. That gave Penn State State confidence that they didn't have to wait just to see his film. They were able to push. It's kind of similar to the Lackawanna guys where, you know, get him on campus, say, especially J.B. Nelson, get him on campus, see what it is. And then you get a head start over everybody else. So it wasn't, you know, it wasn't exact camp. It was an unofficial visit, which they were allowed to work out. They were allowed to work out for an hour or so. That that played a big part into it. And, you know, Trout Wine felt from there he was, he was ready to ready to take him. So, you know, they, they, they pushed for a couple of weeks. Roland felt confident. Penn State, you know, wanted him. And, you know, we got to where we were last week. So he's a good addition. He won't be here for another year, as you mentioned. Has to play one more year at Harvard. Or I think he just wants to play one more year at Harvard. Wants to get a Harvard degree. Yeah. Mechanical engineering is what he's focusing on. It's only he has a, a secondary degree in astrophysics so uh, we do not uh we don't have that <laughs> <laughs> yeah. i was trying to do math earlier to project uh, or project uh, penn state's class moving forward and that was enough for me so Absolutely. props to spencer Coleman for that because I, I could never do any of these pictures no doubt yeah no it's good to get a guy like that in early obviously i think you trust the evaluation of phil trout line of mike yurtich of james franklin when they get these guys on campus and work them out more often than not, they hit. Obviously, you're going to miss every now and again recruiting, but that was a good get for Penn State. We'll see what he can do in the future. Let's move to the high school ranks then, Ryan. Catron Allen. We knew Penn State won it. A four-star uh, running back to join Nick Singleton. We're going to put a little bit of his tape up for everyone to see it now. Penn State lands the IMG Academy, Norfolk, Virginia native, and uh, one of the nation's best running backs to kick off another high school commitment stretch. And this is the guy that when you say you wanted two running backs to me, Ryan, he's exactly the guy you want to join Nick Singleton. Yeah, yeah man. He is a, a bruiser. bruiser. Fat man <laughs> is his nickname. Right, that's that's always cool, right? right. Uh, 5'11", 220 ish. Might be up to six foot now. We we have him at 5'11", 215. I think he's up close to the 220 now. A couple things. Uh, great vision, bigger back, definitely a between the tackles kind of player. Uh, we've struggled to get, you know, exact 40 times and uh, shuttle times. We know we had a camp earlier this year down at IMG. Uh, we were told 4'6", 40, 4'5", shuttle. 
uh, how, I, how accurate those were, I'm not exactly sure. Uh, but if that if those are, those are those are good for great really for a player of his size. Yeah. Uh, shout out to Jaywan Slider here. I think. I think, I think Nick, Nick Singleton, Singleton still ends, ends up at Penn State, State potentially without J1 Sider. Obviously, Sider had a big impact on both, but I don't believe that Katron Allen ends up here uh, without him. So this is a, a huge commitment on his end. Uh, another guy that Allen mentioned was Keandre Lambert. Uh, yep. Just first off, Penn State hasn't gotten a lot of guys from the Tidewater region over the years, uh, so they built a little bit of a bond, and you know, to get another player out of that region is really good. That's that's a great moving forward. And then it seems like just a, a good one-two punch with Singleton. I think both Singleton and Allen are, will, will be great between the tackles. Singleton's a little bit more athletic. He, you know, he runs a triple option at, at Governor Mifflin, so he, he gets out on the edges a lot. Whether that's how Penn State will use Singleton, I'm not exactly sure. Uh, one thing with Allen then, too, is he, he he's a great third down back. He's shown a lot when it comes to pass blocking. Uh, he catches the ball out of the backfield more than Singleton, so he makes a lot of sense. From, from that perspective, but you know, whenever you're able to get two top 125 running back commits in the same class, you know, it just it just goes with that momentum that Penn State's had over the years of running back. So keep it going strong. You know, one sorry, I got a fly in my face here. Uh, one thing I'll say about uh, Allen is, you know, if you would have asked me in the beginning of June if he would have been part of this class, I didn't really see that coming. Uh, but his his official visit, man, just shot him up the board. Uh, I had him at like maybe fifth or sixth, and that's just my estimate. I don't, I don't know the exact word. I wish I did. Uh, and then you know after that visit, though, everybody was just raving about him. You know, we pretty much you know we always had Singleton and Amari Hampton, one A, one B, and then really felt like Allen was kind of that next guy. Uh, after his official visit. Yeah, and it says a lot about Jaywan Sider to me that he had Penn State involved with Nick Singleton, with Katron Allen, with Amari and Hampton, with, uh, there's, you know, there were Demari all. I mean, there was a couple of guys that Penn State was looking at. Obviously, Singleton was always the, the top target, the Pennsylvania guy, the four star from Governor Mifflin, but they were hoping for any one, any number of other four stars to commit. You know, it's not like they had one other guy and that was the only egg that the bat, you know, the basket was in. I mean, you know, they had plenty of options. So I think that that goes to show you that, you know, I think I wrote it in the commitment impact, but Jay Wan Sider might be James Franklin's most important hire to date since he's come to Penn State. Now, obviously, Mike Yurcich might take that mantle depending on how things go here in 2021. But yeah, Sider is a not only, and I think the other thing, Ryan, is that. He's obviously a great recruiter, right? When he came to Penn State, everyone knew that he was a great recruiter, but he's shown, too, that he might be able to develop talent just as well as he recruits it. Yeah, yeah. For, for sure, sure man. The, the only, only thing, thing I'll add as far as, as like Penn State's top recruiter is that I think I still, and we'll get into this maybe with the next player we're talking about, is Terry Smith. Yep. Uh, if you look at the success, success Penn State's had in Philly this year, year. Obviously, obviously he always had great ties with Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. You know, he's now pulling a cornerback out of Louisiana. If, if, if you had to ask me today who's Penn State's top recruiter, it'd be Terry Smith and then Jay Wan Sider. And they're, you know, pretty close. I'd lean a little bit towards Terry just because, you know, they just now got their first cornerback commit. And yet he's probably played a role in six, seven, eight uh, commitments so far. So, you know, I've always kind of felt that Penn State fans overlook Terry a little bit. And right now... He's, He's producing, producing, man, and, and fans need to understand that. Yeah, he has Penn State in with a number of guys. He has helped. He has helped Penn State land a number of guys. But like you mentioned, Ryan, they did just pick up a corner, which is of course his position. It's Jordan Allen, the three-star from Louisiana. Didn't have an LSU offer, but had a ton of interest from big-time programs. He ends up picking Penn State, joining this class on defense at the end of last week or on Saturday. I'm sorry uh, to kick off yeah. the weekend. Yeah, just a huge commitment from Louisiana. That's not something we see very often. Uh, Noah Kane grew up there, but he played his high school ball in Texas, then went to IMG. So, you know, is he – Are we, are we considering him? Really. Yeah, are we, are we considering a Louisiana commit? I'm not sure. I mean, to me, this is the first true Louisiana commit since Michael Motti. And, you know, even even Motti had ties to the program, obviously, as, as Penn State fans know. So getting a player out of Louisiana is huge. Uh, incredibly confident and physical player. And I think that's one thing that really kind of stands out from his highlights. Uh, loves to get into it with wide receivers. Loves pressing. I'll be curious, though, how much Penn State allows him to do that at the next level. Uh, he can get away with it at the high school level, but he's, he's not, you know, a 4-3 burner. 
uh, with, you know, incredible agility that he can get away with that at the next level. Some people think he's a better safety. Uh, they, Penn State definitely likes him at cornerback, so that's where he'll stick. Uh, and then just one other thing, he's a great tackler. Uh, definitely ahead of most defensive backs that we've seen over the last couple of years, uh, at least the guys that have committed uh, when it comes to tackling for him. So uh, just a couple of things there that stand out. Uh, Penn State beat out Louisville here, basically. Miami also hosted him for an official visit. Uh, and but they got involved a little bit too, right? Say, Say that again? again. Was Kentucky involved a little bit in this one or no? Uh, uh, no, it was, it was mainly, it was mainly Miami, Miami and Louisville for the most part. Yep. Uh, but well, I guess, like I said, Miami got two commitments uh, and then really just, just what it was, was relationships from, from what I understand. You know, he, the, the guy didn't make it to campus. Right. His family had a funeral. He had to attend that. Obviously that, you know, Totally acceptable. That's, That's not, not a surprise. surprise. I would do the same. So he didn't. He didn't get up here, and then relationships really just kind of won out. You know, I think if the guy comes up here for a visit, you know, we may have seen a quick commitment like that because clearly the relationships uh, were on a different level. So shout out to Terry Smith there uh, for for getting that one through without ever getting a player on campus. I, I would assume that that Jordan comes up for the Auburn game. Uh, or the whiteout yeah, game. He might be a few, one of a few guys who wants to come up that weekend. I think we might be a little busy on the recruiting front that day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for, for sure. sure. Although those classes are probably going to be done by then. So that's right. Yeah. That's right. A lot of underclass. But, yeah, no, Terry Smith, is, again, to your point, I mean, recruiting well, developing guys well, really probably easily the most underrated member of James Franklin staff, I would say. So I don't even think it's a question. And Penn State gets Jordan Allen and starts, uh, you know, the part of the class with a corner uh, where they didn't have one before. So we're about halfway through this edition of the Blue White Illustrated Penn State football uh, recruiting podcast and video. I uh, want to promote the magazine, the 2021 BWI Preseason magazine is now available, 116 page. It's comprehensive. It's exclusive interviews. It has some recruiting insight from Ryan, features, opinions, analysis, you name it. You want to know anything about the Nittany Lions. Heading into this season, you can find it there. Visit comanpub.com slash BWI preview to order online or call customer service 814-234-1177. Also, depending on where you're listening to us, if you're on the podcast side of things, don't forget to subscribe, leave some feedback. We're working on getting on Apple Podcasts. I know that's a big thing for a lot of you. We will be there as soon as they let us be there. And if you're watching the video, hit the bell so you know when the next video pops up. And also subscribe to our channel over on YouTube. All right, Ryan, let's move on to 2023 here. Alex Birchmeyer, the broad run Virginia offensive lineman, commits to Penn State to re-kick off the class of 2023. Obviously, Penn State had Mega Barnwell, the four-star tight end, also from Virginia, as it turns out, committed. He decommitted, still has Penn State among his top schools. But this class now officially starts with Birchmeyer, and from reading your story and talking to his coach, this is a guy who is maybe the perfect first commit because he wants to be a leader. He wants to be a peer recruiter. He wants to make this class better. That's why he committed now. That's that's, that's what he told us. I was surprised that Alex was ready. Uh, we, we started learning it a day or two before he announced that he was about to make a move. I, I, I thought he would wait at least until the season. But the one thing we did know was that Penn State was always pretty much the clear favorite. Uh, he visited twice on his own during the dead period and then came up to Penn State basically immediately as soon as the, the quiet period that really isn't quiet at all. Right. Sorry, you. Uh, huge, uh, huge addition for Phil Troutline. I think this is his, his, his best, best commitment yet. Uh, Drew Shelton's Shelton also a heck of a player, but Birchmeyer to me is is pretty special, special man. man. He, I, I, we have the number sixty one right now in the rivals rankings, and I think that's too low. Just He's watch the film here. I mean, watch how he just destroys guys on the other side of the line of scrimmage. You can see it. He, he, he loves, loves the pool, the man, and, and, and he's, he's a wrestler, wrestler too. You got to love that. that. Knows how to use leverage and all those things. So, uh, but one thing, you know, just from talking to Adam Gorney this week, he you know oversees a lot of uh, rivals' his rankings nowadays. You know, he basically said that that Birch Meyer is someone they need to probably move up. He told us, uh, you know, we're just getting started on. What about Drew Allard? Have, have you talked to him about Drew Allard at all by chance? Let's not get into that right now. Uh, <laughs> we could, we could go all day on that one. Yes, Drew Allard should be moving up at some point. But anyway, uh, 
he has he, he basically said that you know they think Birchmeyer is better than Najee Harris, who actually wrote a story on last week from IMG. He's another really good interior lineman, and that he thinks that Birchmeyer should be up close to the Chase Masonis, uh who's right now I think around 20th in the country uh, for, for 2023 rankings. So I see a player here who should be a top 40, top 30 player, and then if he continues to progress, once you get in that top 30 range, you, know, you have potential to be a to be a five star. So that's what I'm seeing here. I, I pushed last week that I think Bershmar would be a heck of a center. Uh, whether it's that or guard, we'll see. He, if he keeps growing, he could he could be a tackle too. But we just haven't seen it yet for me to feel confident. Uh, if he goes out and plays on the edge, he has two years of high school yet, so there's a good chance he'll end up on tackle at some point. You know, we'll, we'll see the athleticism and stuff, and that gives us a better idea. But right now, just from a character perspective, a leadership perspective, a football IQ perspective, um, there's so much there that works for that center position, you know, it's the quarterback, the O-line, you got to make adjustments, uh, different assignments, you know, a lot of calls, and just he seems like someone that could grasp that to me. He hasn't snapped yet, but you know, he's the total team guy, like we said. He, he committed right now to recruit other players, and, and he's known he's been leading this way for a while. So I thought he, I thought he'd see a few more schools uh, during, during the season, check out some games, but he wants to get this class rolling, and, you know, Penn State fans are going to love to hear that. Yeah, there's no doubt. I mean, his coach just – I believe the way his coach put it was he's a blue-collar guy going to a blue-collar program in at Penn State. I think a lot of fans appreciate that and understand what that means, and I think that, that when you look at uh, Birchmeyer, he is the guy that, again, I think he's the perfect way – to start a class of 2023. Of course, Penn State's not done in the class of 2022, and we've made you wait long enough. You know, we obviously teased it a little bit at the beginning, but it's denied Dennis Sutton week. I mean, there's no way around it. This is maybe the most anticipated commitment since Micah Parsons back in 2018. Ryan, there's probably not too many we can remember that rank up there in terms of how excited Penn State fans are about this possible commitment. I mean, he's going to pick between Georgia and the Lions. We've known that for a while. He's Coming down to Thursday, we don't have a time yet, but don't worry, we'll put we'll figure it out here soon enough. And it really comes down to this: Penn State obviously has pushed really hard for this guy. He's a Maryland kid. He plays at a school in Owing Mills or McDonough, where they've sent guys to Penn State. But it doesn't mean Penn State's the end all be all. Um, but they're trying to lock him up, and we'll find out what happens. But what is the latest that you're hearing as we head to decision day? Well, first, well, first off, I've. I do, I do think, think I know a time. It'll, it'll be somewhere, somewhere in the evening, evening 4, 5, 6 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, exact time yet. I think it'll be around 5, but I'm not exactly sure yet. That's just what a uh, friend or two told me. So we'll, we'll see what happens there. I logged the Futurecast last week. I think a lot of you have seen that now. And, and really, it just comes down to sources giving me the impression that they're, they're more confident than they've been, at least since uh, July started. Obviously, Obviously, over the last year or so, everybody, everybody was leaning Penn State, State with the nine. He takes this incredible visit to Georgia. Georgia. It's, it's Kirby Smart. Smart. It's Georgia. They're, they're recruiting on a level that, that you know, you know only, only a couple, couple schools can match right, right now. now. Yep. And Athens, Athens is incredible. incredible. I mean, I mean the, 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 you know, you know, the kid told, told me he, he loved Athens. Athens. So, so it's, 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 it's it's understandable why he really had some hard decisions to make here. And he still has one. It's not. It's definitely not done. I'm not trying to give that impression. So you know, Georgia's going to keep pushing hard all the way up. Thursday, Thursday, but it, it just it, it feels, feels like he's it feels like relationships, relationships here are, are the key. I feel like George has built an A relationship with them, and it feels like Penn State's an A-plus relationship, plus relationship, if that makes sense. So that's where I'm leaning right now. And if they are able to get him, it's big for so many ways. Obviously, whenever you get elite defensive ends, man, that you, you, you can't pass those – not that you can't pass those guys up. You, you can produce them into you know top, top ten picks all overall. It's such a key position. I think just – from uh, getting a bad taste out of your mouth kind of perspective, yeah. Julian Fleming the year before, two years ago, uh, Nolan Rucci last year, those were guys that Penn State really needed to land. They didn't. It, 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 you know, fans were upset about it. So to, to get over that hump, to land a five-star player uh, would just be huge for so many ways. Obviously, Obviously for a ranking, ranking perspective, perspective we'll jump Penn State up a little bit. bit. Well, I'll, I'll mention that here at the very end. end. But, but uh, 
so many so things to like about this player, player man. And also, also just from a personality, personality perspective, perspective, a maturity perspective, perspective he's easily one, one of the top, top guys I've gotten to know, know in this class. class. Just, just, just he's, he's, he's more mature than me. I think I say that for some guys. I really, I really believe that with Denai. He's just on a different level. You would never, you never would think he's still a teenager. He's, he's four or five years ahead of. Uh, where, where he, he, he should, should be for his age. age. So, so we'll just, we'll just be, be a monster, monster pick, pick monster pickup for Penn State. We'll, we'll, we'll find, find out Thursday, Thursday uh, sometime, sometime in the evening. evening like, like I said, four, five, five six, six is kind of where, where I think it's going to be. All right, awesome. Well, Penn State fans, obviously looking forward to that very much. We are too. We'll have all the coverage over at bwi.rivals.com where you can join us in the Lions Den for all the premium updates. Uh, Nate Bauer just posted an exclusive interview review with James Franklin, so that's on the site. Obviously, Ryan's pumping out commitment stories left and right, and David Eckert's doing great work, too. So, I mean, when you look at this, let's just spend one more second on Dennis Sutton, Ryan, because I don't think we can overstate how important this would be for Penn State. In the time you've covered Penn State recruiting, let's go back into the vault here. What I, I We'll just say Parsons, obviously, is in this conversation, but we don't have to spend too much time on him. Everyone knows that. But what does this remind you of in terms of not just anticipation but also potential impact should Deny Dennis Sutton pick Penn State? Micah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to think of someone to be better. Um, Derek Williams back in the day? I'm not, I'm not sure. Yeah. To me, to me, it's Micah, Micah for a bunch, a bunch of reasons, reasons just because, because, you know, Micah committed early. You know, yes, he decommitted, but it was always just one of those guys that you have to absolutely land. Yep. I mean, obviously, obviously Derek, Derek Williams' situation, situation was different, different, different staff. staff. They were up and down, and then they got, got that momentum with Derek, Derek and Justin King. King. You know, everything, everything went from there. there. So, you know, maybe you can relate a little bit to Derek Williams, but Penn State's just been recruiting on a better level for, you know, you the know, last handful of years, years than what they, what they were back then, then you know? So, so, so to me, me it's, it's just, it's, it's, it's more like Michael Parsons, just a player that you have to land, you know, you, you, you feel you like you almost had him, him and then it almost felt like he escaped a little bit. Yep. And then, you know, it feels like now they're, they're going to get him. It's like I said, it's not done yet. I want to stress that. I feel like some people, you know, you see these future casts and they think it's completely done. And for some players, that's the case. I don't think that's the case with the Niners. So, I would I lean towards George Parsons, Parsons, but I'm, I'm sure, sure if we, we went back, back uh, you know, especially if we further into the into, into the vault, we could think of somebody better. But this, this is just a key, key commitment for so many reasons if they get them. Yep. Well, like I said, we'll have plenty of coverage throughout the week, so please please be sure to check the site. Uh, obviously, we I don't know if we'll be podcasting again. We're getting ready to head to Indianapolis soon for Big Ten Media Days. Thursday's a big day in the Penn State world, Ryan. It's Big Ten Media Days, James Franklin and players uh, doing in-person interviews for the first time since 2019. That'll be exciting. There's seven teams that go on Thursday. Seven on Friday, we'll have on-site coverage in uh, Lucas Oil Stadium, so that's something else to watch for. But let's wrap things up with this. Obviously, um, Big Ten Media Days is always the unofficial kickoff of the season. That's no, that's always been the case. But recruiting is not done. I mean, even though we're getting close to putting the pads on and hitting the field, we still have a lot of recruiting stuff to talk about. Let's hit on first K.J. Winston, obviously a top target an uncommitted uh, player from uh, Maryland who plays defense. Penn State has been on him for a long time. He's moved up his decision date. What's the plan? Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, safety, safety prospect, 6'2", 190 from the, uh, DeMatha. Uh, so, so he told he me a couple weeks ago he was going to announce at the end of August. August. And the reason for that is his mom's birthday, birthday wanted to, to you know have some sort of a celebration with her and his family. family. Makes yeah. complete sense. sense. You know, yeah. Hundreds of players, players do that. Yep. The issue, though, though was always, always going to be that he, he he can't, can't wait, wait that he knows, knows if he wants to come to Penn State, State he, 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 he couldn't wait that long. So I think he was going to probably give a silent commitment to either Penn State or Maryland. I think it's going to be Penn State. And then try and wait four weeks or so to publicly announce it. And that just doesn't that doesn't happen nowadays. People are just too good. People like myself and you were just were digging too much. It, I think it would kind of, you know, uh, it would, it would, it would get, get out there, there if, if yeah, he was a silent for that, that long. So, so I've been leaning towards Penn State for a while here. Maryland, Maryland made a big push with him. They had a great official visit. visit. Uh, but, but I think Penn State, Penn State just has so much more to sell at the moment. moment. They, they, they need, need help with safety. safety. Um, they, they have, have good, good ties with the math. Uh, I think he has a great relationship with Anthony Poindexter. So everything here points to Penn State. He, Like I said, he's going to announce on July 31st now. So what is that, 12 days away? Uh, I, 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 expect I expect him to be a Nittany Lion. Lion. I, I expect him to be the, the, the final addition uh, back, back there, there for safety. Awesome. Well, he will decide here soon. I agree with you. It's hard because 
I think those of you that have followed recruiting for a long time, maybe if you're new to this, you don't realize it, but everyone's obviously very respectful in the industry of not ruining a kid's announcement, not you know, usurping his moment to celebrate, basically, his moment in the spotlight and all of that. But at the same time, once you do put a big amount of time between your, you know, telling the staff that you're coming and your announcement date, things just leak out. And it might be a coach, it might be a, a teammate, it might be a family member, but it gets out there. So I think that that makes a lot of sense. Obviously, his mom, I'm sure, will be thrilled to celebrate her birthday and know which school he's going to either way. So that will be good. But we'll see where things go there. And then the other uh, athlete, uh, you know, but likely defensive uh, addition or, uh, you know, commitment in this class could be Christian Driver, who obviously we all know dad Donald played for Green Bay. James Franklin spent a year coaching in Green Bay when Donald Driver was there. Ryan, Penn State is seemingly really trending well in this recruitment ahead of his announcement. We have to wrap this up soon. My family is sitting on the front door waiting to come in. <laughs> all right. Let's, let's just real quick on so we're, room. Yeah. We're almost we're done. My wife's here texting me. Uh, yeah, yeah, Christian Driver, Driver I, I felt like he's been to Penn State, State for a while now. now. We're locked in for July 29th. 29th. I say KJ Winston, Winston will be the last safety uh, just because, because Driver, Driver actually, actually announces two days ahead of him. And, and I, I, So Driver really wants to play wide receiver. receiver. I, get I get the impression that with, with the wide receivers at Penn State's landed so so far, plus Darius Clemens is still out there, maybe they would maybe prefer safety, but – yeah, they'd, they'd love, love the kid, kid regardless. regardless. You know, you if know, he wants to play wide receiver, receiver, they're absolutely going to take him. him. Um, and, and, you know, just to see how it plays out. out. Like, like, all these guys are going to be here for at least four or so years. years. They'll, they'll, they'll mix and match and put guys all over the place. So I felt, like I said, I felt like this has been Penn State for a while. Texas A&M, Oklahoma have been recruiting him. You know, are they pushing all out? I don't get that impression. Mississippi State, Michigan State won to get him on campus for an official visit. He didn't go. Will they try to get him for an unofficial visit when the, you know, the, the quiet period starts up next week? Maybe, but I, just, I don't see it happening. This should be uh, a Penn State commitment. And if they get him, they get Winston, and they get Deny, that puts Penn State up to 2,501 points. Uh, they would be second but behind Ohio State. I don't think anybody's catching Ohio State this year. They're on a torrid pace. Uh, and I, 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 was, I teased this earlier. I've been doing the math. Right now, Penn State – well, Penn State would have an average of 108 points per player, which would put them 10th currently. Now, there's a couple schools above them who have a good group of four stars right now. They're going to add more three stars to bring that down. And, and I see this class kind of ending up somewhere around six, seven, eight. You know, that they would have 23 commitments if, if all three of these guys fall into place. It leaves them at least two more scholarships. I think 26 is possible. 27 might be stretching a bit, but I can see them going over maybe by one. So that would leave me on you know, three or so spots left. But right now, what I'm seeing, if you, if you look at with Georgia behind Penn State, Alabama's behind Penn State, Oklahoma's behind Penn State, they're going to catch up. They're going to keep adding great players. That'll probably knock the Nittany Lions down outside the top five, which I know fans will probably be a little upset about if they want to see a top five class. But six, seven, eight, man, you can't ask for much more. Yeah, that's okay, too. Yeah, it's that's great. great. Uh, you just, 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 you know, obviously yeah, everything that happened last year with no visits and whatnot to, to get yeah, all, these all these guys in June, start start banging, banging out these commitments like they have, getting, getting all that momentum going, which is grab 2023 20, eyes. We already saw some, some of that with Birchmeyer. Birchmeyer. It's just the snow, the snowball spinning, man, and, and it's growing every day, and that's great to see. So we'll see uh, what ultimately happens. I think all three of them are going to end up at Penn State, though. That's at least as of, what is it, Monday, July 19th. All right. Well, time will tell. Our time here on the Boot White Illustrated Penn State Football and Recruiting Podcast has come to a close. We want your feedback, though. Hit us on Twitter, at Greg Pickle, at Rival Snyder. We want to know, is it too long? Is it too short? Do you like the lighting? Can you not stand the audio? Let us know what you want us to talk about. We will be back, I'm sure, next week with more Penn State recruiting news to discuss. But until then, he's Ryan Snyder. I'm Greg Pickle, and this has been the Blue White Illustrated Penn State Football and Recruiting Podcast. Visit us for more at bwi.rivals.com.